Let's start with the new features Angular 8 brings. And there, the first, probably the most important feature, depending on how you measure it, would be the experimental support for Ivy. Ivy is the new internal rendering engine the Angular team is working on. And that of course means that the external API, so the code you write, doesn't really change or does not change at all. The internal renderer is in the end the, the tool, the thing, the part of the framework that is responsible for taking your instructions, your templates, your compiled templates and so on, and bringing something onto the screen and doing that in an efficient way. It's also responsible for wiring up change detection. So all the heavy lifting, the DOM updates and so on, that is all done by that internal rendering engine. Now this internal rendering engine has already been updated in the past by the Angular team. And now they're updating it again. And normally that wouldn't matter too much because you're not really seeing that change. The code you write is not affected. But this time it's a complete rewrite, again, only of that internal engine, not of Angular itself. And that rewrite should result in an engine that drastically shrinks the bundle sizes and hence allows you to build way smaller Angular apps without the need to adjust your code. However, Ivy is not fully ready for production yet. Generally, this new engine is fully implemented, but there are some edge cases, some missing things or some untested parts. And therefore, if you have very complex or mission critical applications, you might not fully want to migrate to Ivy yet, but it's definitely worth trying it out in some of your existing or new projects, your demo project, your playgrounds and so on. So playing around with it is perfect and you can enable it in every new application and also add it to existing applications. Instructions on how to use Ivy in new or existing projects can be found on angular.io slash guide slash Ivy. There you find both the flag you need to add to the CLI command to create a new project that uses Ivy and you also find instructions on how to update your tsconfig app JSON file in existing projects to enable Ivy. And with that you should automatically get smaller bundles. Besides experimental support for Ivy, the new update also brings experimental support for Bazel. Bazel is a build tool which uh, was used internally by Google and which now is open sourced. And it's a tool that orchestrates your build process. It does not replace Webpack, rather it is a way of more efficiently controlling Webpack and all the other steps that are involved in building and optimizing an Angular project. And it's not fully finished and tested yet, though you can opt in and play around with it. Once it is fully finished and fully optimized, it will be fully integrated into the CLI and should at some point be used by the CLI automatically. And the advantages you then get by this are more optimizations and therefore probably also smaller and faster bundles, but also a faster development process because new changes, code changes should be reflected in the code and therefore in the browser faster, the rebuild times should go down. And also if you're having a continuous integration pipeline where you automatically run your tests and you deploy the Angular app and you do this multiple times a day, such things should also be sped up by Bazel. So for now you can, just as Ivy, enable this to play around with it and see how it works. If you're interested, there still will be some uh, rougher, uh, Things there will still need some manual wire up work, but basil.angular.io is the place to go if you want to play around with it. And there you find the documentation on how to enable it and how to use it in your projects. So these are two experimental features and that of course is hmm, only kind of exciting, I guess. Ivy is a big thing and will be a big thing probably with Angular 9 once it's fully finished in the new default rendering engine. And the same might be the case for Bazel, but right now it's just uh, for early adopters. Now there is at least one new feature added by Angular 8 that will immediately get you some benefits and that is differential loading. Differential loading is a technique which is automatically used by the CLI that means that there will be different bundles created by the CLI, one for modern and one for legacy browsers. And the one for modern browsers is smaller because it can simply use more modern JavaScript syntax and doesn't need to compile that modern syntax to more complex workarounds. 
Additionally, it also doesn't need to load as many polyfills. And therefore, you can ship smaller bundles to modern browsers and you get that, as I just said, out of the box. CLI automatically produces these different bundles. You still deploy your entire dist folder content. And the cool thing is that once some user visits your page, a small script will automatically detect which browser the user uses and load the right bundles so that you don't need to configure anything. You just use the CLI, you automatically get that when you build for production and you automatically deploy an app which will then also automatically only load the scripts that are required. So smaller bundles for a lot of your users. Bundle size may decrease up to 70 to 20% according to the Angular team and for a free win that requires zero changes, that's not too bad. Now what about breaking changes? Now Angular in general always updates such that backward compatibility is ensured. So if a feature is about to change or about to be removed, then it will be deprecated first and after a couple of versions it will actually be removed. And that has been the case with at angular slash HTTP. This package is no longer supported. There is no version eight of that package. Now, if you have an angular seven, six, five, whatever app that still uses this package, this app will continue to work because the older versions of this package are not unpublished. There's just not a version eight, nine and so on package in the future. And that is okay because we have the more modern client and angular HTTP was deprecated in Angular 4, so you should simply switch to at angular slash common slash HTTP to use the new Angular HTTP client in case you haven't done that. By the way, my Angular course on Udemy, to which you find a link below the video of course with a nice discount, is fully up to date with that new package and I updated and replaced all sections where the old client was used so that everything is new and shiny again. So that's the one breaking change, not really a bad or a uh, horrible change because, again, this has been deprecated for quite some time. There's also one last minute change, which only just landed in release candidate 5. And that is that in Angular 8 only, as uh, I read it, that should be removed in Angular 9 since this is some kind of transition here. So in Angular 8 project, when you're using view child or content child, you also have to pass an additional argument where you define whether this is static or not. So here, for example, we have a view child and there we now need to add a second argument, which we previously didn't need to add, which typically should be set to false, static false. That is what you can typically add and most of your code or pretty much all occurrences of view child and content child should work. Now, if you're wondering when you would set this to true, as I read it, you basically set this to true if you plan on working with this thing you're retrieving here in ngon init, which I'm not doing in this example here. So false is the default, but if you need to access this in ngon init, then as I understand it, you have to set it to true. And you can actually read more about that on angular.io. There's an article about that uh, static query migration. And there you got a FAQ. And there you can see when you should set this to true, and here are the examples that you're creating an embedded view on the fly and you have to set it to true that you can do that in ng on init. So that is a useful resource and it's a little change, not hard to implement obviously, but affects all code where you use view child or content child, not view children and content children and simply adding static faults should make your code work again. What about Angular 9? What will we see there? In Angular 9, we should see stable support for Bazel so that it might be fully integrated into the CLI already. That at least is the plan as far as I can tell. The same should be true for Ivy. It should be the default view engine by then. And that means we should get a lot of the benefits I talked about in that new version with Angular 9 as a default. Right now you can opt in and in a lot of apps it should just work. In bigger apps you might face problems. When Angular 9 is released, it should work everywhere. Now there's one more interesting change. We might see a new API and with that I mean the code you write might change slightly. Of course in a backward compatible way so that you still will be able to write your Angular apps as you're used to, but we might see some changes which you can but don't have to incorporate as of Angular 9. 
an alternative bootstrap API, maybe one that works without modules, without Sewn.js, so that your general component syntax with add component, with templates and so on, directives, services, that will all stay the way it is. Dependency injection will all continue to work as it is, will keep the same syntax, but maybe we get rid of the ng modules, so of the Angular modules, maybe change detection works differently behind the scenes. We might see some API changes, which you then can use. And if you fully use that new API, then Ivy should actually produce much smaller bundles, up to 70 to 90% smaller. On ng-conf, which took place at the beginning of May, there was a chart shown where the goal was to produce simple Hello World Angular apps, which are only 14 kilobytes big. And that's about 90% smaller than a normal Angular app. 7 Hello World application was big. So that's really exciting. It's too early to tell what will change there. It will not be a complete rewrite. Not everything will change, but we might see some new features, some small changes that allow us to reap these amazing benefits. So I'm really excited for Angular 9. We'll see uh, how it really is when this version is released. And until then, enjoy Angular 8, and I hope this video was helpful.